What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the garage and welcome back to tuning the map on the Super Auto. We've got the auxiliary fuel system set up, the meth is working, everything should be good. It's time to get the math curves dialed in with all this additional information. Stick around. This video is intended for educational purposes only. Improper tuning can cause catastrophic mechanical damage and you should do your own research before attempting any changes like this to a vehicle. Attempt custom tuning at your own risk. Hey everybody, I want to take a moment as always to thank all of our supporters, sponsors, subscribers, uh, Patreon members. Make sure, share the love. Go check out the Patreon. You can find it at GoatRopeGarage.com. It's a great place to get tuning assistance. We offer email tuning assistance. We also have a custom tune option over there. If you're looking for somebody to do a remote email tune, I can do it for you. If you're on the GM platform, hit me up for any details. I'll, I'll uh, let you know. Uh, on top of it, we've got the Thursday night live show. Always a great place to come in, 8 o'clock Eastern on YouTube, ask questions, uh, chat with other tuners, other people who are modifying cars. You're having problems, they're having problems, they've got solutions, you might have solutions. It is just a great knowledge bank. Then as always, we got to thank our sponsors, Snow Performance, uh, Nitrous Express, ADM Performance, all those guys that have been helping to make all of this possible. Couldn't do it without the support of our supporters. Check down in the description for links. Give them some love. So, previous episode, I'll throw it up in the corner like I always do. We were having some issues with the auxiliary fueling. We got it sorted out on there, and then we were also having some issues with the methanol kicking on. And it looks like we got that sorted out. So now, with all of that stuff thrown together, we're running super, super, super duper rich, which is awesome because that's what we wanted. Uh, so we're going to go through. I've got the logger pulled up here, or the scanner pulled up here. We're scanning our mass airflow system. We're going to start doing the final touches of getting our mass airflow system dialed in here. So let's go down the road here, get into a little boost, and watch what happens. Now it should be noted that we also uh, relocated the mass airflow sensor a little bit further downstream. I was getting some reversion from the bypass valve being too close to it. So we're running rich uh, just across the board because of that. We're getting a better uh, airflow reading across that thing where it was a little bit spotty beforehand. So we're going to have some improvements to be, to be made just to the general tune, but once we get into uh, auxiliary injection and methanol injection, you're going to see that we're going to be running pig rich down into probably the 0.6 lambda range, which is way too much fuel. In fact, it causes dieseling whenever we uh, try and shut off the truck because we've got so much unburned fuel sitting around. Uh, but we're going to get that sorted out right now. We're just kind of cruising around right now, waiting for some open space to get down on the throttle and just paying attention. We've got good fuel pressure on the auxiliary system. Uh, EGTs are looking good. We're running right around 900, which is uh, pretty good for this setup on Stoic. Now we have not hit it yet, but we do have the boost controller set to limit boost to 10 PSI. We've gotten probably up to about eight or nine so far, but honestly, we want to get the fuel trims dialed in a little bit better before we really lace into this thing and get some mad boost going on. Okay, we're gonna pull over here, go ahead and stop our data log and take a look at what we've got so far. And if we scrub through here, we should get pretty rich down on the top and you're seeing 20% richness up to 30% richness. So we're gonna wholesale just dump this thing in. So let's copy it over, open up our tune real quick. Looks like we may have had one spot of questionable data down at the bottom end, so we'll t pay attention to that whenever we apply this to the curve. This is a big shift, so we're gonna, sp we're gonna multiply this by all the bananas. Look at that, look at that shift. Look how much richer we are because of the auxiliary fuel system. We go back through here and let's find a spot where we're getting into uh, boost pretty heavily and we'll add the uh, chart versus time over here so we can see what we're doing. That's whenever we got off of it. We're maxing out our injectors, so we're gonna need more fuel. It's good to know, we can bump that up pretty easily. So, we'll go ahead and apply these changes. And as I said, there's gonna be a bad spot right there that we'll smooth across to fix that. Then we're gonna come in here on the top end 
and we're only going to be making it richer so we can go ahead and subtract some out so let's multiply this by 0.95 to get it to fall in line we'll do it uh, let's go back right about there and then I'm going to do 0.99 to remove 1% at a time and I like that that's that's pretty decent and then here's where our secondary injectors kick in on at 7350 so let's just kind of smooth this area out a little bit and then we'll go up from there and smooth the rest of the table out because it's pretty bumpy we'll try and keep it smooth through as we go through this process and we'll save this as step 10 or step 11 actually we're going to go ahead and fire up tuner studio here get our ve table pulled up and we're going to adjust our fuel ramp here once we get connected and we had dropped it down in the previous one down to 30. Let's go ahead and take it back up to 100 because we want to mitigate our, uh, how, how short our time is. Basically, whenever you're working with direct injection, once you get past six milliseconds, you're gonna start running out of fuel on primary. And we want to try and keep that uh, pulse width under six milliseconds on this setup. So We'll do that by filling in the corners here. We're gonna keep on coming on at 1% down here at the bottom, but we're gonna ramp everything up. We've got plenty of room to go here, so this is just kind of the first step of testing out our ramp up speed on all that. Now that we're done with that, we can pull our tablet back up here. And we're still recording there. Let's go ahead and flash this file in. I'll be right back. Okay, we're getting everything connected back up here. Got bad data on here because we started recording too soon. Okay, so what did we change? Well, we applied our uh, edits from the uh, scanner, but we also went into our secondary fuel system and we've got it ramping up more aggressively now. So even though we should have fallen in line a little bit better, uh, on the top end, we added a lot more fuel. So we're still gonna see a lot of richness on the top end that we'll have to tune out until we get it to where we want the secondary injection system kind of running. Looking pretty good right now, just kind of part throttle. We're right around where we want to be. Okay, very rich. Very rich, which is what we're expecting. But hopefully we have enough fuel this time. We're getting down to 0.68. So we're not gonna push it out much beyond that even though we got over 10 PSI on that one. I don't think that we got into boost cut. I'll have to go back and review the log after the fact to see whether or not it is properly cutting boost at 10 PSI. I haven't really messed with that system. And in fact, that might be a topic for a different video where we set that thing real low and see if we can get the boost control system properly working on here because it's not been tested. We don't want to rely on it, but this uh, this new setup just makes so much boost all the time. And in fact, we're making a little bit of boost outside of power enrichment right now. So I'm going to have to make some adjustments to power enrichment to come on. Okay, let's take a look at our data here. See what we've got. And we're rich across the board, but we're definitely getting up to 35% rich. As I said, we were hitting it pretty hard there. That's what we expected. I want to see though. Yeah, we definitely need to make some adjustments to power enrichment because we're not going into PE early enough here. So that's something else we're going to want to take a look at in the tune file. So let's copy this over. We're going to do a wholesale change once again because we are making such big adjustments. Whoo. That's not right. That data is not right. Let's try that again. There we go. That looks better. I had the wrong section. Look at how far our math curve's falling off down here at the end. So we're at 10.350. This is going to mess with our spark airflow. Remember, we're going to touch on that on a later date, but this is something we have to keep in mind because we are changing the amount of air. This, these numbers, these numbers that we're looking at here are in pounds per hour. We're effectively saying that we're making less air than we are to get this thing in line. That is part of 
uh, doing this auxiliary fuel system. So let's smooth this out up top because it's very ragged. Maybe smooth this little bump out at 79.50 a little bit. Okay. Now let's go look at our power enrichment table. So yeah, delays up to 5,000. Drop that down to uh, eh, 20, eh, 2,000 should be fine on the delay. Enable RPM, enable hyster hysteresis, all that looks good. Torque percentage. You know, I wish we still had a way of doing this based off of uh, manifold air pressure, but for now, We'll just drop this down to 2000 so we're getting into power enrichment a lot earlier. Power enrichment, as I said, is one of the things that will end up killing your motor because you delay it too far out there. That's what helps to keep our, our uh, cylinder temps down, things like that. So it's a lot better set up here. And we'll write this in and go for one more pull. How'd you like that ride? Okay, so we've got the new PE tables in, we've got the new MAF curve in, everything's looking pretty good so far. We're going to just kind of do the same thing, go out, take it for another spin, get some boost into it, see how it responds, get that boost curve sorted out, uh, see what kind of consistency that we can get on the boost curve for whenever we're in uh, auxiliary fueling mode, and then we'll take a look once again at the uh, duty cycle time, or I guess the pulse width, on our injectors. Still not sure we're going into PE quite as like quite as much as I'd like to. I might need to adjust my ramp in rate a little bit so we're ramping in a little bit harder. Uh, and we're running a little bit lean here at part throttle, but that's because we've been doing multiplication changes by whole percentages. That's what you're gonna see. We're gonna overshoot it. Uh, nothing wrong with that right now because where we're going a little bit lean isn't really an issue whenever we're going lean, whenever we're under uh, extreme power that we have to be concerned about it. So keep that in mind. Naval pedals at 89%. That's what's killing us right now. Okay. So let's solve this right now. Let's look at where we're at. We're looking for our pedal. Do, 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 do. Accelerator pedal position, 45. Fourteen, twenty, twenty-five. We're going to drop this down to twenty-five percent. Normally, I believe we're running around thirty, but it's been a while. So we'll uh, keep our enable pedal down, knock it down. Hysteresis is at one. We're fine there. Max torque hysteresis runs out at ten percent, and then enable torque should be low. It's even higher on the Camaro, so we'll leave that all kind of as is and play around with it, see if we're still not getting in, because we didn't get into PE that time. We were still a little bit rich on the top end, luckily, because of our setup. Let me close this compare file out so we're not seeing all kinds of green stuff, and then we'll pay special. We're going to go by half this time. No, don't do that. And we've got a little bit of a bump right there. Let's transition this. And then we've got a couple spikes down here. This just might be hard to get a transition on because of the way that our setup is. But we're gonna try it out. We'll save this as step 13, load it in. We'll do another pull, see if we can get into power enrichment this time because we've gotta get that sorted out. That's whenever we're running dangerous, as I said. Okay, our laptop battery is about to die. Hopefully we can get home and uh, get this log done beforehand, but we'll see. Come on, give me good data on the wideband. There we go, okay. Okay, we're getting into power enrichment now lot better seeing what I like to see finally 
I mean, you can really tell whenever the secondary injectors kick on because now that we're running power enrichment, we're hitting 0.85 like we should be. It's around what we're commanding. Whenever the secondaries come on, man, we shoot right down into 0.7 something. So we're going to have some more rich, richness up top and the curve to pull out. But I feel a lot better, and you can tell the power is there. It's feeling a lot better now because we are making so much air without the additional fuel. We weren't running lean per se. We were just not giving it as much fuel as it would have liked in order to have combustion for the timing that it was running at the time. So it's all kind of a balancing act whenever you come down to it. At the end of the day, it's air fuel spark like I've always preached and having everything right at the right time. You know, timing's got to be right. The amount of air, the amount of fuel, all that blends together to create that perfect balancing act. Okay, we're back at the garage and we're taking one last look at our pull that we just did. And here's where we really got into it. And you can see we're finally getting power enrichment. And we're actually, on, we're commanding 833. So we're commanding a little bit richer than I normally like to, but scrolling through and seeing wherever we actually get into it. Yes, I know my battery's running low. I'm trying to hurry. We're not into boost quite yet. There it's on before we hit boost. Then we're into boost. We're at 8.3. It's looking pretty good. Our duty cycle is hitting 4.4. Our, our injector uh, millisecond, our pulse width is 4.4. That's where we want to see it. We could even take a little bit of fueling out of the secondary system because it seems to be supporting us very well. But I'm going to leave the settings as they are for now. I'm going to update the math curve with this latest data, and we're just going to kind of wrap it up. It's dark in here. I know you can't really see me that well anyways, but pretty good uh, first run of going out, getting into boost, uh, playing with uh, getting things like power enrichment set up, getting our math curl dialed in, et cetera. So listen, I want to thank everybody as always. You know the drill. Thanks for stopping by the garage. Remember, ABT, always be tuning.